Now, if someone's on the website, they're like, you know what? I think it would be cool to sign their guest book. Let's go ahead and do that. They start typing and then Got him. What's up guys, Sam here. In this video, we're gonna be doing some hacking. There's a website called DVWA, or Damn Vulnerable Web App. Yeah, that's the real name. And it's made purposely with security vulnerabilities. So you can get practice with penetration testing. Now, pen testing is used to simulate cybersecurity attacks on a website. It doesn't necessarily have to be a website, it could be like an operating system, but it's used in order to find potential security vulnerabilities. So say you own a website and it owns sensitive data from your users. You wanna make sure uh, none of that gets stolen. So you could outsource your website to a pen testing company and they basically run a bunch of diagnostics and tell you whether your website is secure or not or what vulnerabilities it has. So we're gonna get this app up and running and perform some exploits. We're gonna be demonstrating a SQL injection as well as cross-site scripting, which are probably the two most well-known security exploits. Now, whether you're a cybersecurity engineer or not, uh, I believe that if you're a web developer, front-end or back-end, you should still have a basic understanding of certain security exploits and how they work. And I believe it just makes you a better developer overall. All right, so this is the application running locally on my machine. Yes, I know it looks like it was created in 1999, but that's not the point. It's using XAMPP, which runs an Apache server that's connected to a MariaDB SQL database. So on the left side here, we see a bunch of different types of attacks that we could do. We have things like cross-site request forgery, cross-site scripting, the one that we're gonna do first is SQL injections. So as you can see on the lower left, there are different security levels here. So if we want, um, we can choose between low, medium, high, and impossible. And this pertains to the security measures that this website has. So on low, it basically has like no security measures all the way up to impossible, which means that it's um, basically impossible to hack. So if we go back to SQL injection, and down here we can see a bunch of links that we can use that gives us info. Uh, let's actually look at like a formal definition of what SQL injection is. So it says SQL injection is a code injection technique used to attack data-driven applications in which malicious SQL statements are inserted into an entry field for execution. So if we look at the site here, we basically have this right here. And as you can see, I was doing some testing beforehand, but basically you can insert some data and you are trying to get this to run as SQL on the back end. So if you go down here, we can actually view the source code of the back end, which again is not realistic, but this is for practice purposes. So if we look at the code here, it is written in PHP. So I apologize for that. And we don't really need to totally understand what's going on here. It takes the ID that we submitted, sets it to this variable ID, and inserts it into this SQL statement. Now, in order to understand this, you will need a basic understanding of SQL, but it's not gonna be anything crazy. So it just takes this, inserts our ID, and then executes the SQL. So how can we inject code in here to get it to do what we wanna do? Well, let's go ahead and copy this, and let's go ahead and paste it into this editor. So as we can see here, what we type in gets inserted into here and executes a SQL. So what we could do here is say, okay, we wanna return when the user ID is one. And what we could do is we could comment out the rest of the code here, add another apostrophe, and we can say, or one equals one. So basically, if we type this code in here, let's go ahead and cut that. It gets inserted into here. And what it's saying is the user, where the user ID equals one or one equals one, and then everything else after that gets commented out. So since we have this where statement that's always equal to true, it's as if we didn't even have a where statement here and it just returns all our users. So again, let me copy that. Let's go over here. Let's just do like a simple example, right? User ID equals one, submit, it returns, it returns where user ID is one, it returns the first name and the last name. But let's go ahead and insert that code that we put in and hit submit. There we go, boom, we see there are five records in the database and it returns everything. So although we're not doing anything particularly malicious here, we are getting the code to run in a way that it wasn't intended to run. So now uh, let's go ahead and try and steal some passwords here. So what we need to look at is something called a union injection. I'm gonna go to my cheat sheet here. We're gonna go to union injections. If you don't know what a SQL union is, it basically returns values from 
two or more queries. You could have something like a select statement, and then you would union it with another select statement. And as long as the number of columns are the same and the data types of those columns, it'll just return everything. So again, what we could do is we could go here and try it out. So we could do if user ID equals one, and then we can comment out the rest here. And then in here, we could add a, our union. So we'll just do union. And then now we have to, here's what we have to do a little bit of guessing because we don't know what the column of the passwords is or what table it's in. But this is just something they'll, you kind of have to get a little bit lucky on. We know we need two columns. So the first column again could be like first name. And then the second column, we'll just assume it's called password and we'll assume it's in the users table. Now we are doing a lot of assumptions, but usually this, like usually the table that stores the user data is called users and the password column is usually called password. So again, we take this code in here that's in between the two quotations. We go back, we go ahead and paste it in here. We hit submit and we get an error here. Let's see why. Okay, so what I forgot to do is I forgot to, when you type in union, you have to type in select here. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's go ahead and paste that and then boom there we go we see that it returns everything it returns their first name as well as their password so here we're like okay we got the admin's password but this isn't the actual password this is actually a hashed value of it so what we could do is we could go to this website called crackstation and this is just a hash cracker we hit crack crack hashes and boom it returns the password which in this case is just password so that's a basic example of a SQL injection. Um, although it's pretty simple, you can cause a lot of havoc on someone's system. So if you're a backend developer, never trust what the users can do. Always make sure you sanitize the data that's coming in. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at is cross-site scripting. So here we have a guest book with a name and a message. Let's look at the formal definition first. So cross-site scripting is a type of security vulnerability typically found in web applications. XSS or cross-site scripting attacks enable attackers to inject client-side scripts into a web page viewed by other users. So this happens generally when you have something like a comment section or here we have a guest book, things where the user input gets saved and then when other users log in, they'll see that uh, user input. So in this case, we'll just do Sam, we'll just do test and we'll sign the guest book. So if we wanna even like go ahead and refresh the page, um, we see that the data is still there. So this gets saved in a database. If we wanna go here and, and view the source, again, this is PHP. I don't fully understand it, but basically what's happening is it's taking uh, that name and that message and it's stripping slashes. It's doing some, some kind of sanitization and then it just inserts that data into the database. And then when the page loads, it actually inserts that into the HTML. So if you guys do know HTML, you know that if you wrap something in script tags, you can now put any type of JavaScript in here and it'll run on the page. So let's try something like a simple alert. So let's go ahead and sign that guestbook, and there we see a test alert comes up. So let's go, let's go ahead and click away and then let's click back again on that link. And now every time we click on that, uh, this alert will pop up because it's actually embedded within the HTML of this page. So at this point, we can insert any type of JavaScript that we want. Uh, let's do something a little bit more interesting like a redirect. So again, we would need these script tags. In here, uh, let's do a timeout so the page will actually load for a few seconds and then it'll do the redirect. So here we set a timeout for three seconds. Once the three seconds is up, it'll do a redirect to google.com. So we'll, we'll, we'll give them a few seconds so just so they have some hope when they get to the website and then it'll redirect them. So let's go ahead and sign that. Let's wait a few seconds and then boom, there we go, google.com. All right, so I went ahead and cleared the guest book again. Uh, let's, let's do the redirect again, but let's, let's send them somewhere different this time. So let's sign the guest book. Let's click off of that. Now someone's on the website. They're like, you know what? I think it would be cool to sign their guest book. Let's go ahead and do that. They start typing and then All right, I gotta pause it before I get a copyright strike, but you get the idea. So yeah, that's basically the, the power of cross-site scripting. If you can find a way to inject script tags into a website, you can do, I mean, not only redirects, but you can like steal people's cookies. Um, I don't know, a lot of other stuff that I can't think of right now. But yeah, as you can see, basically anytime that there's user data that you can put into a website, uh, 
bad things can happen. Some of this stuff, if it doesn't make sense, like the SQL injections or the cross-site scripting, I really think like it just takes practice. Maybe watch the video again, try this website out yourself. It's like I said, it's pretty easy to install. And I really think that's the best way to learn is to learn by doing. So hopefully you guys found the video interesting. Uh, make sure you guys hit this like button and hit the subscribe button and, and all the buttons. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.